Man, some bombshells here while I'm at the beach. Jerry Stackhouse is out. We're going to tell you why and potentially what's next. This is Locked on Vandy. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's get after it. You are Locked on Vandy, your daily podcast on the Vanderbilt Commodores, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? Welcome into the Locked On Vandy Podcast on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Corey Burton. Did you know I was a former Rivals employee and uh, high school football coach? Well, now you do. So, on today's episode, we're going to discuss why Jerry Stackhouse lost the locker room and ultimately lost his job. We'll explore why Shaka Smart would kill it here and also explore Bucky McMillan down at Stanford or Samford, not Stanford, and Chris Mack, uh, bringing him out of retirement as potential candidates. Thanks for making Locked On Vandy your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers, join today, and you'll get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So it's uh you guys are ready for this bombshell. I guess this is this is what's going to happen. Um if uh you probably could have guessed it after last night's performance and after the performances uh throughout the entire season, but Jerry Stackhouse has been officially let go as the head coach of the Vanderbilt men's basketball team. Um, he is, uh, he was, his tenure just ended unceremoniously, um, but he has let go. And ultimately it's because he lost the locker room. And, and uh, there's a lot of reasons why uh, his record reflects that. But uh, I think ultimately they just decided that it wasn't going to get any better. And they decided that now is as good of any as a time to, uh, to move on. So, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things that sticks out to me is the fact that, and I've been talking about this all season long. Uh, every time I've talked about Vanderbilt basketball, it's been the same thing. You have these long stretches of them not being able to shoot a lick. You have, you have things that happen. Um, whereas like guys are not getting better. As they go, they're kind of just playing the same and they're kind of just ebbing and flowing as they probably normally would. Um, he's not – it doesn't feel like he's been putting them in uh, good situations uh, to take advantage of what they do well. And I think that ultimately lost the locker room. I think guys saw that they're not being developed. They see Jerry Stackhouse as this NBA guy and the potential uh, was there for them to be able to be developed to play at the next level in the NBA and it just hasn't happened. Uh, player retention has been abysmal. Um, he's had uh, he's he signed nineteen high school recruits during his uh, during his time here, and eleven of those nineteen players have transferred. Four out of the six transfers um, that came to Vanderbilt with multiple years of eligibility went back into the portal. So um, he is um, just. The track record there of just not being able to keep guys, which which is why this season when he was when when they were finally ravaged with injuries, which in any sport in any sport that's somewhat that's somewhat physical or extremely physical, that's bound to happen. And you've got to have players to be around you, and you've got to have players that you can call on in case of injury. And in basketball probably more so than any other sport. You don't have to have as many to rely on, but they had nothing. But Jerry Stackhouse had nothing in the tank in the low post. He was caught completely off guard there. He was caught completely off guard with only having Ezra Mannion as the guy to build around. And he can't do it all by himself. And it didn't seem like he was, it didn't seem like he knew what to do when that was the case. He didn't feel like he, well, he didn't develop these guys like uh, Lubin. Uh, Lubin kind of came on of late, and he's had you know he, he's had uh, a better run here lately. But 
for the better part of the year, he was non-existent. Tyron Lawrence has been good recently, but again, I think he, I think they found some ways to get him into the game, and he was a big part of that uh, last regular season win against Florida um, on Alumni Celebration Day. But I think ultimately it led to him not being able to develop these guys, not being able to help them out scheme-wise. I mean, you're an NBA guy. You should know kind of how to build around a star player like Ezra Manion. You should be able to figure out, okay, we don't have very – we're not very strong on the low post, but we're going to make up for it by playing a different style of basketball than we're used to. It just didn't seem like he was making any adjustments. It seemed like he'd gotten kind of complacent. And the fact that he hasn't made any tournament appearances, um, he is – I think his official record was um, – his official record was 28 and 60 uh, in conference play. Uh, that's not good. Um, but uh, I mean, it's just something that's been kind of deteriorating over time. Um, he is, uh, I mean, the, the, you know, the bad play leads to fan apathy. And once you kind of lose the fans, also that's another layer to this thing. Like once you lose the fans, it's over, man. Like once, I think I think everybody – I mean, oh, there are some people probably that follow the program very closely that knew it was probably over after after getting beat by Presbyterian because you can't shoot. And then uh, stacking losses between uh, that game, which was the first game, and the start of conference play where you couldn't shoot. You had a struggle – you struggled out of the gates against Dartmouth not being able to score. You play – Uncommunicated, uncommunicative basketball, where you ju- you just can't seem to get on the right page with everybody. You know, you 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 get destroyed on the rebounds. You get destroyed on the boards by every team you play. Like that can't happen either. Like some of the things, that, the things that have been happening this season are a microcosm of kind of his whole tenure, and it's you know it's basically building off of the problems that he's had the previous four seasons. So it's one of those things where like you can't really pinpoint something, but you have to just understand that these problems do present themselves. And going back to the fans, when they start to see it, they start to get apathetic and then they start to kind of lose interest. And when they lose interest, it's over. Like when Memorial gym became, uh, became Thompson bowling arena uh, West that was not good when when uh, when Kentucky fans poured in uh, and, and took it over. When when opposing fan bases can come in and take over your 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 arena, that's not good. That's never happened in basketball. Basketball has always been kind of that. Hey, it's always been like heavily favored on Vandy, which unlike football, football is football is the same way. Football got to a point where it was ninety percent the opposite fan base. Even when like somebody like Wake Forest would come in, like you would see more Wake Forest fans. Uh, in, in the crowd. The, I think the only team that didn't do that was Hawaii because that's really a long way to travel uh, for for a game. But you never know. Some of these Hawaiians may have wanted to come, come to Nashville. So once you get the fan apathy, once you lose that, it just becomes a nightmare to get it back. And you can't get it back. Like once you lose the fans, it's done. They turned on him. And I think ultimately the pressure of – like I think Candace Story Lee wanted to bring him back. Uh, she was trying to explore every possible option to bring him back. But I just don't think you can under these circumstances. I don't think it's going to get any better. I think I think you're still in a state of diminishing returns. Your roster is what it is. So now it's time for a change. Now it's time for new leadership. And that's not to say Jerry Stackhouse is a bad coach because I, I don't think that he is a bad coach. And that's gonna that's probably on the heels of, of him getting fired is probably something that you're probably like, oh, well, uh, that doesn't make any sense. But um, it's, uh, you know, I, I think it just wasn't the right fit. You know, it just was not the right fit. And he's just not, he's just not a college basketball guy. He's an NBA guy. He's a pro guy. It's a totally different game, uh, in the NBA than it is in college. I think, I think part of, part of him wanted to be out. I think if, if you see him on an NBA bench, Next season, I wouldn't be surprised, and I think that would be a really good fit for Stack. I like Stack. I think there's a lot of good things about Stack, but I just don't think it was the right fit at Vanderbilt for the circumstances he was given um, coming off of uh, the uh, the Bryce Drew era, which was also abysmal. Um, but uh, 
I just don't think he was he was able to capitalize on his namesake enough and his his uh, his pedigree as a Carolina guy as an NBA player and things like that. I think he needs to go be a little more seasoned. I think he needs to get in the NBA where I think he can get in that coaching circuit and be just fine. So Jerry Stackhouse out after five seasons. So, I mean, you lose the locker room, you lose the fan base, and you can't recover from that. So, um, but it's over. It's done. Now the focus is on who's next. Shaka Smart, anybody? Is that is that a name that people are interested in? I think it could be, and we'll tell you why. Stay tuned. All right. This episode is brought to you by Robin Hood. This week's March Madness bracket is not that. But did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robin Hood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robin Hood Gold. But get this. Now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with the 3% match. That's right. No cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of quarter one, 2024, validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date for the first 3% match. Must keep Roth IRA for five years. 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SBI. SIPC is a registered broker dealer. All right, welcome back. Segment number two. Uh, looking at potential candidates to replace Jerry Stackhouse. It's the Lock On Vandy podcast on the Lock On Podcast Network. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. Make sure you check on Lock On SEC to make them your second listen, get all the updates on the conference tournament uh, moving forward. So who's potentially next? Shaka Smart is a name that I think rings rings great to all Vandy people alike. Shaka Smart currently at Marquette University. He was hired there after his uh, exit from the University of Texas. He was uh, ineffective there for, uh, for, the most, uh, for the most part. His, he ended a three-season absence. Um, he was hired to replace Steve Wojcikowski in 2021. Um, he is the first black head coach in program history. He led to uh, he led them to a 19 and 13 record um, in his first season there. Uh, last season, he won the Henry Ibo Award for National Coach of the Year uh, because Marquette was Big East regular season champions, tournament champions, and uh, made it to the NCAA. Uh, tournament. So, and he has them this year at 23 and eight, uh, tied for second in the Big East and on the cusp of an NCAA uh, tournament appearance. Um, at Texas, his last season, he was, uh, he made it to the first round of the uh, national, the, uh, the NCAA tournament, finishing 19 and eight. Um, 1920 was canceled. Uh, he would have been there and he was an NIT champion in 18 19. Uh, and then uh, he's made it. Uh, to the Final Four at VCU in 2010 is probably his most notable uh, notable year as a head coach of a um, Division One basketball program. I mean, if you really kind of look at what he brings to the table, I mean, he is exactly what Vanderbilt needs, right? He is, uh, he is the type of coach that's going to command respect on the recruiting trail. He's a proven winner at the college level and even at the, and even at the mid-major level as well to where, like, you have to get creative – in situations like Vanderbilt is in, where you have a depleted roster in a competitive league, and you have to be and you have to be on the forefront of things. You have to be innovative. You have to think of new ways to do things, um, or you're going to get left behind. And the SEC is a really good basketball conference. And one of the things you can't, you know, one of the things you have to do, um, obviously, recruit 
And uh, for for Vanderbilt, his first task is going to be get some guys that get, that can get rebounds, which you play for Shaka Smart and, and probably arguably the best basketball conference in the country. Um, that used to be the ACC, but it's not anymore. But um, and and then you you can he's somebody that can come in and uh, and recruit very very well. Um, he has a uh, he has a high pressure style of play. Like he, what I really liked about him, uh, watching him a lot. I watched him a lot more at VCU in those term those tournament teams, um, and he he did this same stuff at Texas, and um, you know ultimately he's you know, obviously doing the same stuff with Marquette. I think it works. I think it's something that Vanderbilt needed to do this past year, but it, it's a full court pressure. Um, it's like very, it like attacks, 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 right? On, on the defensive end, they trap, they force turnovers. Uh, they disrupt people's rhythms. They make people move. If you're going to score on his defenses, you're going to have to move. You're going to have to have superior ball movement to create, um, to create open looks. And, you're not going to get many of those uh, with his defenses. And I think at Vanderbilt, he's going to have guys that are athletic enough to play this style. Um, but, he, you know, he, he's a full court guy. He's, uh, you know, he's he's kind of like that 40 minutes of hell thing. I think he calls it something different. Um, I think I've heard the word havoc before. Um, but he is uh, he's somebody that's going to uh, cause a lot of pressure. Pressure. Um, so you have to be good in transition, which I think they can be. Uh, you have to be good at um, – you know, I, I don't think you, with the style with the style of play and the heavy pressure stuff, you don't have time to take bad shots. I think you're going to have yourself a lot of open looks based on turnovers and things like that. Um, he's also, again, you know, somebody that's going to build relationships. I think he, that that works really well on the recruiting trail, which is why he's able to have these have success at, at different places like VCU, uh, Marquette, and Texas. Like he he broke some things. He broke a streak at Texas. I just think ultimately. Texas just has like unrealistic expectations and, and he saw an opportunity at Marquette as well. Cause Marquette's kind of a prestigious job uh, in its own right. But um, you know, he, he's somebody that's going to, you know, he, he's a real go-getter. And I think he's somebody that uh, will ultimately bring this whole thing together because I, you know, he, he's somebody that um, will take the best of what each player brings to the table and mold that into a system. Like he's not just going to say, okay, Here's my system. Make it work, right? And I'm going to stand over here and just be like, eh, nah, nah, nah. but he is—he's uh, somebody that's going to to adjust, and he's somebody that's going to be uh, ultimately willing to do whatever it takes to uh, to win. So it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to kind of see what happens over the course of these next few weeks. But I, I think if I think it'd be irresponsible not to make a run. I think you go make him say no. Um, and I think you ultimately say, all right, Shaka, this job, you know, we want you. Here's an offer, play in the best conference in the nation. Go ahead. Uh, let's, uh, let's make this thing happen, right? So make him say no. He may say no. That's okay. Um, because Vanderbilt's not a, not a real desirable job at this moment. Um, but uh, you never know. You offer him enough money, uh, get him back into the SEC. Um, you are not back into the SEC, but just get them into the SEC. <laughs> I'm already saying Texas is part of the SEC. I'm, I'm so, kind of used to that. But, no, he, he's, he is exactly what Vanderbilt needs. If they can get him, that would be a huge, huge fish. And I think they should go after him aggressively uh, the same way he goes after offenses aggressively as well. So, um, you know, that would, be a, that would be a tremendous hire there uh, for, uh, for Vanderbilt to, uh, to pull off. So, Shaka Smart, I think, should be your number one call. Um, I don't know if it will be, but it should be. Um, but uh, I guess you should let this thing uh, cool off a little bit before you kind of go off and make some hires. But um, it'll be kind of interesting to see kind of what Vanderbilt does with this whole thing. But Shocker Smart, man, at Marquette, they're incredible. Watch them in the NCAA tournament. Watch them as they go. So um, that's uh, that's who I would pick. That's my number one choice, Shocker Smart. I think he's the best fit. I think he's probably the most realistic big fish you could get um, to, to, to come in off the, uh, in, in the coaching market. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So um, Bucky McMillan is another name I've heard. Chris Mack coming out of retirement. Uh, you know, I think those two guys would be tremendous hires as well. I think uh, they've done some really good things at places they've been. So uh, we'll take a look at them here in just a second. All right, this episode is brought to you by Nissan. 
That's right. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like all just like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys are able to take it to the next level. The Houston Cougars can only be described as an armada. The top seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there. And so it's no wonder why they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the big 12. The Tennessee Vols can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch. They've really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. Player of the Year candidate Dalton Kinnett has carried the Vols all the season and made the team to watch in March. The Utah State Aggies are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. They've, they've absolutely surprised us with all-powerful performance against New Mexico, giving them their first outright Mountain West title in program history. They say win life, go Rogue. That's exactly what the Aggies have done here. So take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or – Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, we're going to bring it home here in the next few minutes. Last and final segment. Um, before we get into more basketball news, the baseball team today opens up conference play against Auburn. Uh, look for them. They're finally on fire. They're, they're exciting to watch. The Vandy boys are finally hitting their groove. Couple injuries to, to note. Andrew Dukanich um, could be out for the season. Uh, not good. He left. To, he left in his appearance during Tuesday. Felt something twinge in his arm. Not good. Um, but uh, that's why they have so many so many options um, as starters. That's why they that's why they've collected uh, pitchers in the bullpen. So keep in mind that. So we're going to get right back to this basketball talk. Thank you for making us uh, your first listen every day. Uh, thank you to the everydayers for you make this. All possible. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the four part series on the EA Sports College Football Twenty Five uh, cover athletes. We've got some results here. We'll we'll talk to you guys next week about how those results shake out, and then I'll I'll unveil the graphic with the uh, with the image. So uh, that'll be fun. That'll be something to look out for. Thank you for uh, thank you for voting. Thank you for making that part of your uh, part of your week this week. Uh, Corey Chavis, sorry, mis- <laughs> I didn't misspell your name on purpose. It was autocorrect. I was on my phone. Obviously, you can see down here, I'm at the beach. Got a nice little tan going on, so uh, getting all that stuff. So, anyway, um, some potential candidates uh, to, to look out for. Um, first one I think would be a home run if you don't get Shaka Smart would be Sanford coach Bucky McMillan. Um, he is – he's somebody that um, – He's somebody that also fits the style that you want. Um, he's kind of an up-tempo system guy as well. He's somebody that will um, will come in and, and just bring that pedal to the metal type basketball. He's uh, and, and I think he would be a, another home run if you can't get Shock Shaka Smart. I think Bucky McMillan's your next guy. You make him say no. He's at Sanford right now. Um, you can definitely upgrade him into into the SEC, and he knows the, he knows the region. He knows the area. He could get players in the Southeast. All right, so up-tempo basketball. That's what Vanderbilt needs. That's what they have. That's what they need. I think they have to do something different, just like football. They have to do something different. All right, um, but he has the Bulldogs this year, the Sanford Bulldogs. He is 23-3, and 12-1 in conference play. He's uh, in the mix for their first tournament appearance in a quarter of a century, tied – with number one UConn for the most wins in Division One, um, he has uh, so he's somebody that is just absolutely getting it done uh, there. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, he, he's a high school guy, so he knows how to teach. He knows how to he knows how to focus on fundamentals. Um, he is uh, he is also two time reigning Southern Conference Coach of the Year. Um, he's on the the verge of getting his third straight actually. So um, he's somebody, again, you know, I, I think when you, when you look at what Vanderbilt needs to do, I think you have to look at it as um, he needs to be able to come in and run this up-tempo system. He needs to, you have to do something different. And like football, as I just mentioned, football is going to a more uh, unique system where they're featuring running quarterbacks and, and, and weapons that have specific roles and things like that. And you're going to more of that kind of system in basketball. I think if Vanderbilt tries to play a half court game, they're going to get beat. Why? Cause they have no rebounders. And 
uh, they don't have any pure shooters. They have drivers. They have guys that can work in transition. They can create turnovers and score. Um, but you don't have any pure shooters. That's what Jason Rivera Torres is. He's too inconsistent right now. So you need an up tempo scheme where Shaka Smart incorporates a lot more defense into his stuff. He's he's probably more well versed. He's been doing it longer. But I think Bucky McMillan's a very similar style, and, and I think he will bring he'll yield a lot of good great results there. Um, he is in great in the state of Alabama as far as the high school circuit. I think he could recruit even better than Shaka Smart surprisingly because. He's tapped into the Southeast, and he's heavily ingrained in the Southeast. So I think he would be able to take the Vanderbilt name, the SEC name, and be able to recruit to the South in the Southeast and be able to recruit very, very well. His style of play is, is fun and exciting. I think he could develop guys for the NBA eventually, and I think that he's going to teach guys basic fundamentals and, and how to communicate and, and play within uh, play within his scheme and play within their their whole way of doing things. So I think that would be a home run. Uh, simply put, uh, I just gave you the up-tempo version of why Bucky McMullen uh, should be there, but we'll obviously we'll give you more um, as that develops. But uh, another name to consider is Chris Mack. Um, he has won more games than any head coach in, in Xavier men's basketball history. Um, he wants to, uh, he was at Louisville in 2022. He stepped away, took a season off, of, uh, of coaching. Uh, he's just been kind of enjoying a, what is a gap year. So, um, he, he's somebody that can make some things happen. Um, and he is, uh, he's somebody that would fit right in, I think, um, with, uh, with the way things he, he's got a lot of like, I guess, pedigree, a lot of prestige, a lot of things or whatever. So, um, he, he's another good candidate. I think, um, he's somebody I think could command a lot of respect. Uh, at a mid-major level, he he had you know his his Xavier teams were were really good. Um, you watch them in tournament play; they were just on you all the time. Defensively, they put a lot of pressure on you. Uh, offensively, they were able they had really good ball movement. Uh, they could score the basketball. They could take advantage of. I think what Chris Mack does a really really good job of is taking advantage of players of different styles and blending them together and and kind of creating uh, for them. Like you, if you have a pure shooter, like trying to try to funnel things to your shooter. If you have a scorer, like a driver, kind of like what Ezra Magnon plays, he has, he has things to do to be able to get the ball in his hand towards the rim to be able to, uh, to be able to score the basketball and to be able to, to be able to put pressure on teams. And uh, defensively, you know, all these guys stress defense and, um, you know, all these guys are very, very high pressure guys. And I think these, their names lend themselves to be able to recruit very well. And that's half of the battle. Uh, obviously NIL will be a huge factor. How well do they play the NIL game will be a huge factor into their success as a recruiter, um, their, their tempo, their style, their development, uh, getting guys in the NBA, I think is important. So, uh, when, if you can do that, you know, you're going to be in really, really, really good shape. So, um, Shaka Smart, Bucky McMillan, Chris Mack, I think are three really, really good high profile names that you need to take a run at if you're Vanderbilt, um, and, and take advantage of being able to, to if I'm going to use, an, if I may use an idiom, strike while the iron's hot. So, um, you know, th these would be three names that you can't miss out on. Um, you know, start with Shock Smart. Obviously, he's the biggest fish of, of the whole thing. Bucky McMillan, Chris Mack, uh, also, um, if you can, uh, if you can swing that. So, um, like I said, uh, thank you to the everydayers for making all of this possible. Make sure you find us on social media. Um, at Locked On Vandy, um, at Coach Burton on X, at Locked On Vandy on all uh, social media platforms. Uh, make sure uh, you're subscribing, liking, subscribing, things like that. Uh, tell your friends about it. Um, this is this is what we're going to do. We're going to be the biggest Vandy podcast out there. We're going we're going to make sure the doors the doors are covered. So, um, aside from refreshing your phones uh, every five minutes to see if uh, Vandy's hired a new basketball coach, you should be able to take advantage of going to. Uh, going to see uh, the Vandy boys. Uh, they take on uh, they take on Auburn to start off to care off conference play. Um, they need to continue the hot bats and uh, the, the the great pitching uh, to to be able to take advantage of that. We'll have more baseball content next week. Um, this thing just kind of just broke, so um, we're, uh, we're we're taking advantage of that. But uh, I want to thank you guys for listening. Uh, we'll catch you back here next week. I'll be back from the beach and uh, ready to rock and roll. Take care, and as always, we'll see you back here next week. Anchor down.